Thunder and lightning clouds struck the ground around the mountain of Canterlot City, shrouding it in a cloak of noise and a torrent of rain. Meanwhile, Luna was sipping her favorite cup of coffee in the safety of the castle in the middle of the day. She stayed up, since Alicorns, such as herself, didn't really need much sleep due to their universal connections to the essence of life. Tia had the stars, mainly Equestria's own sun, Cadence with her ties to love, and Luna had the moon and the darker matter of space itself. Still, she couldn't have felt more tired than she already was. The day was just beginning, plain, sad, and depressing. She stared out the window, which was filled with cloudy rain showers and pegasi flying about, moving the rain clouds into place. Luna, despite being a gamer, wanted to enjoy a relaxing walk in the royal gardens. It wasn't happening today, though. She sighed with resignation as she stared at the document she had received today. Something about a hydra stomping through Ponyville. It deemed the resident, Rainbow Dash, to be arrested because of a certain cyan pegasus that was practicing a double sonic rain boom around its home. Or so the proprietor claims. Either way, the case was annoying. The elements of harmony were there to stop it from causing more destruction. The town was fixed, and the damage was paid out of her sister's own wallet. Yet, a certain some pony named Blue Blood took this as an excuse to detain one of the ruffians, as he would call them, and have them locked up. Luna promptly ripped the paper apart with the luxury royal sweater, shredder, and she fed the abomination of a document into the gaping maw of the machine. How wonderful. Well, that takes care of that. She cheerfully thought as she sipped some more coffee. Damn, I really wanted to go out today. I was going to go to the game shop after my walk, too. Fall of Cybertron came out a few days ago. She swiveled her fake leather chair towards her computer and clicked on her fire main shortcut. She went on to her Tumblr site to see if the multitude of requests from her loyal fans, mainly those from Colts asking her to show her flank, perverted assholes, she thought irritably. Then she smugly smiles. Well, I suppose my flank is pretty wonderful. Still, I'm afraid I'll have to decline their request. She tapped a quick response to one of the fans' questions and posed for a webcam picture to show what emotion she felt about the answer to her question. She then switched to YouTube, where she owned a gaming channel filled with Let's Plays of Minecraft, Portal, and other games. She had quickly rose to the top among the greats, YouTubers such as The Sly Fox, uh, To Buck Us, Hogscast, I can't pronounce that one, Chaotic's favorite, she would know. And most recently, alongside with her, Belle Eve. Luna remembers their first video game together. It was a Portal 2 game, where she and Belle argued over who gets to distract the turrets and where to shoot the portal. Pretty fun. Before that, they first met at 2012 E3 convention, Equestrian Entertainment, when Luna got lost in the crowd from Celestia. She then went to the program Steam, a popular multi-game platform designed by PIPE where several games, from PC to console, could be downloaded. In Luna's opinion, it was very convenient as she could enjoy all her favorite games on one computer. Unfortunately, IVP wasn't very compatible with computers for some odd reason. She logged on and browsed through Steam for any recent updates or game sales available to her. She sure did love its game sales. As she scrolled down the list, she found a notice post concerning a new co-op mode in Equestrian Fortress 2. Wait, what? She tapped the mouse button on the link to read more. Pony vs. Machine lets you take five friends and fight a lethal horde of robots on new maps with the opportunity to upgrade abilities and weapons along the way. Go to equestrianfortress.com pvm for more information. Luna's wings suddenly had the urge to express joy by springing himself into a stiff position. Luna's mouth hung open as she stared into the single paragraph of words. Equestrian Fortress 2. Co-op? Robots? 
She was sold. She brought out her eye pony, and quickly started to make a few calls. Chaotic, meanwhile, stopped it, or stepped into the room, still wearing the ridiculous maid outfit he was forced to wear for a few days. His face was wrinkled with exhaustion and embarrassment. Luna, I polished all your lunar pots. Anything else? He asked. Yeah, go fetch me a sandwich, she said. Ugh, that isn't cool to say. He winced. Too bad. You snooze, you lose. Luna put on her headset and switched on her mic. She adjusted the ear paddings to make sure it was easy on the ears, and lowered her chair height to give her the most comfortable seating position. She checked the lobby to see two players arrive. Magic of Sparkles won, and love for all. Hey, Luna. Glad you could invite me, Twilight thanked. Tis not a problem, Twilight Sparkle, Luna assured. Hold on, Twily. My game needs update. Should I accept it? Cadence asked. Um, yes. It allows us to access the new weapons, Twilight explained. Luna's headset beeped three more times, announcing the arrival of Luna, Belle Eve, and Ditsy Doo. Hey, Luna, Ditsy said energetically. Hey, Luna, what's up? Belle Eve greeted. Oh my gosh, are you the real Luna? Lyra energetically asked. Why, yes, I am. Oh my gosh, I'm playing with the actual princess. Lyra girlishly squealed. I've... I played one of your music pieces before. It was amazing. You are an icon in music history. Luna blushed a little at the compliment. Oh, it was nothing, my dear. I just like to play the harp every now and then. You created the harp, paving the way for all uh, chordophones, Lyra said enthusiastically. Uh, chordo what now? Luna asked. You know. Stringed instruments, she said. Oh, that. Well, I didn't mean to brag about it, but I suppose I did do a little something-something, Luna said. Uh, are we going to play, or what, princess? Belle Eve complained. Oh, of course. What map did you girls want to play? She asked. Oh, oh, can we play the one in the forest with all the buildings? Ditsy asked. Does every pony agree? Luna said. She received a lot of check marks from her teammates, telling her that they would like to. All right then, pony works it is. Luna chose the designated map and started the match. The group sprawled or spawned in a bunch of company buildings. To Luna, it looked like the lounge area where employees would relax and eat at lunchtime. She confirms this when she spots a coffee maker in the corner. Muffins! Ditsy, in her energetic uni and engineer uniform, dashes over to the coffee maker and um, repeatedly hits the virtual pastry to simulate her desire to eat it. She, she makes a noise that sounds somewhere along the lines of om nom nom. Derpy, no! That muffin's not for you! Belle even insisted. Belle Eve sports the soldier class as she tries to push Ditsy away from the fake food. However, the Great Pegasus' assertion proves to be a match against Belle's strength. Twilight donned the demolition pony, with Cadence and Lyra in the medic and heavy class, respectively. Luna herself preferred to use the sniper class. Come on, girls. We don't have that much time. Luna went over to the double doors that she assumed to lead outside. I can hear the timer clicking already. Let's set up camp. The group spreads themselves throughout the map to cover the grounds evenly. Cadence and Lyra, the two being the most appropriate pair, set out together to cover the wide main street and the two lanes that lead to the bomb's target. Ditsy, Twilight, and Belle went to the front lines in hopes to diminish the robo-pony's numbers. Luna chose to go solo and camp out in a high setting where she could view both left and right lanes. From there, she could easily pick off any stragglers from the front lines that missed. The announcers started the countdown as each of them took their positions. Five, four, three, two, one. Up from the tower, Luna could see in the distance the blue robot 
a containment module base that serves as the spawner for the Roboponies. A steel horde of clanking robots burst out of its bay doors to meet the opposition. One of them held an enormous bomb in its scrawny back. Scouts! Twilight shot off a couple of grenades. With a satisfying explosion, the group that surrounded the bomb carry explodes into a mess of nuts and bolts. Luna picked off the Roboponies that attempted to reach the bomb. With the aid of Ditsy's mechanized turrets and Bell's rocket explosives, the first group was easily annihilated. Luna didn't pause, though, as there was an announcement for the end of the wave. Her predictions came true as she spotted another group of robots rushing towards the bomb. Twilight shot off a couple more grenades while Ditsy rushed towards the group of soldier robots. The robots launched a couple of their own rockets at the Derpy Pegasus, but her turret intercepted them in air, causing the missiles to explode in their owners' faces. Ditsy took out the rest of them with a couple kicks and hammers. Uh, Belle Eve just laid behind the turret line, spamming rockets at the base of the cliff where the robots were jumping from. This is too easy, Belle Eve said. Do you think the robots ran out of scrap metal to build more? I doubt that, Luna said gravely. From what her teammates couldn't see, she scouted the next waves of enemies with giant robot soldiers in their wakes. Super soldier, Luna yelled. The front line screamed as the giant robot landed in front of them, picking up the bomb and strolling along, leaving the trio at the mercy of the emotionless hunks of metal. What in Equestria are you girls doing? Kill that thing already! As you can see here, Princess, we're kind of busy with our own problems, Twilight said, slicing a robot next to her. Lyra, we can't get to the bomb guy. You and Luna have to take it out uh, with headshots. Belly blasted the robot off his feet. Aw, yeah. Time for the mint power horse to slap some bitches. The minty unicorn revs up her minigun. Cadence just sighs as she uber-charges Lyra for the robots. Luna wasted no time as she continually sniped the supercarrier with a line of bullets. Inch by inch, the robot's health goes down at the same pace as its walking speed. Lyra unleashed her own hail of bullets as she attempted to bring down the walking behemoth. Damn, it's just not working, Lyra shouted. Derpy, can you do me a favor? Yeah, Dizzy said bashing a robot behind Twilight. This guy has muffins. Tackle him, she said. Muffins? Muffins! Luna watched in amazement as Ditsy rushes at the robot with impossible speed, knocking the giant down to the ground, killing it instantly. The wave ends with a blaring alarm. Oh my gosh, Ditsy, how did you get there that fast? Luna said. I sprinted, Ditsy said. But... There's no sprint in the game, Luna said cautiously. Ditsy nervously fidgeted a little. Um, well, doesn't matter, Belle Eve heads over to the upgrade station. We already won. Now for me, I'm going to get some hype grenades. Luna already, at the station, picks out a nice rifle that she knew could pierce through multiple targets. She also improves her jarret. Uh, to slow her enemies for easy headshots. Finished, she makes way back to her camping spot. The round had started yet again as she shifted in her seat to get more comfy. As she did, though, Luna's character fell to the ground in a pool of blood. What the fuck? Luna shouted. The kill camera traveled across the map to reveal the figure was a sniper robot. Oh, horse apples, Luna muttered. Girls! We have a sniper on map. Oh, snap. Luna, where is he? Belle asked. Rooftop, second building behind you on your left, she said. Okay, Twilight, plant some bombs here so I can bounce them off when they explode. I don't want to waste time shooting a rocket on the ground when I could get sniped in the air. Okay, Twilight said as she planted a couple sticky grenades at the base of the wall where Belle Eve indicated. Okay, on my mark, Belle said. She ran towards the grenades and left above them. Mark! Twilight immediately pressed the detonator, and Belle took off into the air, 
looking around the rooftops for the sniper. Her target was confirmed as she spotted him, until the sniper quickly killed Belle until she was while she was in midair. Damn it! I had him too! She pouted as she respawned. Luna, meanwhile, spawned back in the office lounge. She went up to the tower steps again and aimed her scope over the robot. She took the shot, but entirely missed when her target moved. Luna anticipated the robot's shot and ducked behind a wall, narrowly dodging what would have been a definite kill shot. She came out of her protection to aim again. This time, the sniper was missing. Shit, he's gone. Lyra, can you see him? Luna said. Can't really. I'm down here. Lyra looks around, then spots the sniper jumping between the rooftops in front of her. And on its back was... Guys! It has the bomb! What? The others shouted in unison. Oh no. That must be the reason why there's no robots spawning, Twilight said. Lyra and Cadence attempted to shoot down the sniper bot, but with no such luck. The robot sniped the both of them in succession. Shit, they both said. They had to give the robot respect, though. It pulled off some pretty awesome kill shots. Luna, however, wasn't going to let some pansy, fake sniper pass her. With all her reflexive timing behind her hooves, she moves the crosser over the head of the bomb carrier. She cracks the bullet shot, and the robopony goes down, smashing into a pile of boxes. The girls cheered, as the robot goes down. But Luna listened intently for a bullhorn or a siren. No such sound came to her ears. Girls, we have a problem, she warned. What is it, Luna? Cadence asked. The wave didn't end. The group suddenly stopped in silence. Dizzy broke it. But Luna, if the wave didn't end, then where are the robots? She asked. Luna looked towards the looming fortress that spawned all the robots. She looked at the bay doors to see something large heading their way. Girls, get to the front line now. This is bad. Very bad. Luna started shooting at the menace. What is it? What do you see? Twilight asked. Luna waited for a dramatic pause. Then she yelled at the top of her lungs. Tank! There was a silent pause for a quick moment. And then the whole group, group screamed in a frenzy as they dashed towards the forest area, attempting to cut it off. The rolling tank wouldn't seem like it could be affected by sniper rounds, but already, Luna had quickly shot 20% of its health bar off. It didn't seem to be slowing down, however, as it burst through the wooden wall that serves as an entrance. Dizzy landed on the tank from a nearby roof with a hammer and hoof. She slammed her mouse button in hopes of bringing it down. Twilight released her round of grenades at the beast. Derby, this isn't going to work quick enough. You might as well drop the hammer and use your butt instead, Twilight said. How on earth does that work? Dizzy retorted. I don't know. Just do something, Twilight yelled back. I am. Oh my fast, guys. Just shoot the damn tank already. Uh, Belle Eve said, developing a headache. In the end, despite the entire team's effort, the tank plowed through all their defenses and imploded the stupidity, a stupidly designed self-destruct button in a nuclear explosion. Luna groaned as the base exploded in a fiery death. Luna took a few deep breaths at their loss. She stretched her hooves and then went to the upgrade station to pick something new. Okay, girls, let's try that again, she said, confident they could beat the game. Her bedroom door opened as Chaotic came back, magically floating the requested sandwich. Luna looked at the insides of it, only to find daisies and spiced mustard. It was her favorite snack, but since she lost, she needed something else to make her feel better. Teasing her favorite scribe might do the trick. I don't want this. Go make me a different sandwich, she announced, pushing the plate away. What? Then what kind of sandwich do you want? Chaotic said. I don't know. Surprise me. Chaotic looked at Luna in disbelief. Then he stomped his hooves in frustration as he picked up the plate and stormed out of the room. Luna smiled a little, feeling a little satisfied. But she also felt kind of bad for doing that to him. 
She'd make it up for him somehow. But now, the game needed her attention.